What's up guys? I am super psyched to show you what I discovered. In yesterday's video, we took a deep dive into the rug glitch. If you haven't seen that video, check out that first so this video will make sense. So after I stopped recording the episode, I kept experimenting a little more with the rug glitch. When I made the deep dive into the settlement size glitch video, one mystery that remained was what was the true variable that contributed to the size meter reduction? You know, when it came to the various objects you could use to store scrap, a viewer comment inspired me to come up with an experiment testing his theory that turned out to be the correct answer. I'll leave links to those videos below. A similar mystery remained after yesterday's video, and that is, why do workshop objects sink when you store or scrap the rug under it when using the rug glitch? I mean, Fallout 4 Builders has been dealing that ever since the game came out and they discovered this exploit. Well, I think I solved the mystery. And if not, at the very least, they came up with a stellar solution that seems to work every time. Now, I did a quick search on the internet and I couldn't find anyone who came up with the same theory I'm about to tell you about. But I do want to apologize in advance just in case I missed anyone's post or video where they might have covered this. Obviously not intentional. I hate that feeling like someone copied you and did give you credit, so I know how you feel. If you're a Fallout 4 YouTuber and you already made a video about this, just email me privately and I'll be sure to credit you in an upcoming video. But if not, then I may be the first to come up with the solution, which would be kind of cool. Okay, so I was playing around with the vending machines, another workshop item that has a large and very annoying invisible bounding box around it. I really wanted to see if I could understand the programming logic behind the sinking. You know, once you understand the science behind something, practical applications can follow. Okay, so here we have the new Coca-Cola machine. I'll just show you real quick. Yeah, that's about as far as you can get it to the wall. Maybe about right there, so it's very annoying. So anyway, get back into the shade over here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me show you what happens in case you don't know what I'm talking about here when it comes to the, I'll, I'll just use a larger rug just in case. Okay, so there's that little pop onto the rug. Okay, now, I can move this rug, sink it into the wall, or get it close. You know, if I used a stack of rugs, I'd get it closer. But here's the thing. All right, when I store this rug, look how far down it sinks. Poor little Duke of <laughs> Dang, it looks like a robot stuck in the ground now. That's funny. Okay, so that's obviously a problem. As a matter of fact, here, let me show you real quick. Okay, so yeah, there we go. We can sink it into the wall there. But check this out, even in this area right here, watch what happens. Boom, it disappears. Where did it disappear? Well, it's underneath the floor there. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Okay, because I have the, uh, the floor stacked with a little, uh, you know, crawl space underneath. All right, so let's get that thing out of there. It's pretty sad. <laughs> okay, so here's what I did. I started thinking, gosh, you know, why is it doing that? There's got to be an explanation why. And I started experimenting with a few things. And the first thing I did was see if uh, multiple floors prevent the sinking. So I went to concrete, for example put down this concrete block and I tried to, or not the wall, sorry, floors. There we go. All right, I tried to see if I could have the Nuka-Cola machine sit on top and you actually can. Just have to lift it up so that it reaches that, uh, that top floor plane. Okay, so now with the uh, concrete block there, this will move with it. All right, but what happens if we treat this concrete foundation like the rug and then pull the rug out from under it? Boom, drops right perfectly down into place. And as soon as I did that, I was like, wow, that, that provokes a really interesting theory. So let me present my theory to you guys and see what you think. And then I have a great solution. You know, like I said, once we understand the science, we can start creating practical applications. 
So here's my theory. When you use the rug glitch, the bottom most object in the stack is the only object that's registering its wireframe mesh with the surrounding objects. So when you store the rug, the objects higher in the stack need to quickly redefine their bounding volumes. Computers are fast, but they still take time to process these kinds of calculations, even if it's measured in milliseconds. So when you pull the rug out, the object drops and quickly redraws its bounding volume, but not before it's already sunk a little into the floor plane. But if it's a matter of time, even in milliseconds, all you need to do is give the object an extra few milliseconds to recalculate its mesh, and then it'll remain solid when it hits the floor plane, whether that be wood, metal, concrete, dirt, whatever. You know, I just use floor plane as the generic term there. That means you simply need to give the object some extra room before it drops down for that calculation. Rugs, even though they're, you know, great vehicles for moving things around, sometimes they're too thin for that calculation, you know, not enough time for that recalculation. But if you added a buffer to the rugs to raise them up, boom, problem solved. All right. Now, obviously, using the large concrete foundations isn't practical if you're inside of a house or whatever. But what about smaller floor items? You know, let's just take the basic little wood floor here. All right. As a matter of fact, this is what I used to test it after I used the concrete block. All right. I used the, uh, the double floors. All right. So move these around. We'll clip this a little bit into the, not clip it, but, you know, get it flush. Yeah, it's clipped a little bit. Okay, remember how this thing just sunk completely through the floor there? Watch this. Boom, drops perfectly into place. That's just amazing. But those double stack floors can be a little impractical sometimes. So what about just using, you know, like a regular wood floor? Will it work? Like one of these tiny ones. Alright, so now we can move this around. And when we pull the rut or when we pull the <laughs> the floor out from under it. Okay, so in this case, it's not high enough. It needs a little more time to calculate. So let's try something else here, which actually would be even more practical to use. Alright, let's try a stack of rugs on top of it. See that little jump up there? All right. Now this is actually a lot more practical, like if you're trying to shimmy something, like if I wanted to get the bending machine into the wall over here, you know, actually I might even need a few more rugs for that extra reach. All right, but you get the idea. Okay, so let's see what happens now. All right, I'm gonna pull the floor shack in this case out and it drops perfectly down into place. Now I can just remove these other rugs and it's already done the calculation uh, to redraw the wire mesh. So it's not gonna sink down any further after that. So, boom, problem solved. Isn't that awesome? I don't know. All right, <laughs> guys, I know for, at least for me, I'm super psyched about this, but uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I haven't tested yet on all types of floor planes, but it's worked so far on wood and dirt. So this quite possibly could mean no more need to leave the rugs there or have the items sink and no need for the pillar glitch for this. With this method, if anything, they'll more likely to pop up as they catch onto the mesh of a collided object. But the pillar glitch itself has other amazing uses, and I will be covering that in the next deep dive. Thank you guys so much for the amazing comments I've been getting and the support on the channel. Keep spreading that word around. If you're not already subscribed, why not subscribe? Just hit that button and that bell and get notified when these videos drop. We'll see you guys back here soon for the next lesson in the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. Happy building and class dismissed.